guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. We are hitting up goat nutrition today. They've evolved with a very specific niche to fill quite different to that of cattle and sheep, and they are certainly not sheep with horns. So if you have goats grazing pasture out there with the sheep, make sure you watch this to avoid running into any health issues. Generally, if you're looking up goat nutrition, you'll run into how to feed lactating goats to optimize production. So today we're gonna be focusing more on the pet, on the backyard goat, how to feed your weathers, your dry does, geriatrics for holistic health and avoid those common health emergencies that grace my consult room. I will see you in a sec. Hi all, welcome back to Says the Vet, I'm Dr. Says. Diving into goat nutrition today, just a quick reminder, if you're appreciating the videos, please don't forget to go ahead and subscribe by hitting the emblem. This is a two-part episode, so subscribing means you'll catch the next one as well. A wee bit of background, and then we're gonna jump straight into the nitty gritty do's and don'ts of goat feeding. Goats have evolved to be able to survive in an array of different environments, often with low quality food. They have not evolved to be grazers, but rather what we call browsers, meaning they prefer to eat up high off the ground, whether that be long standing grass, about six centimeters or higher is their happy place, bushels and shrubs, low hanging branches, high hanging branches, they will even eat parts of the plant that others wouldn't to glean all the nutrition they can. So the woody branches, they'll strip bark off the trunk. Nothing's off limits in their eyes, which is why they have a bit of a rep for having iron stomachs. As they say, if they don't jump on it, they'll eat it. Now the iron stomach myth is certainly not true. Just because they will eat different plants does not mean that they should have free reign. As a vet, I certainly run into toxic plant situations with goats much more than any other species. Goats are ruminants, just like sheep and cattle. They have four stomach chambers, including a stomach that is much like ours, and this part's called the abomasum, as well as a massive fermentation chamber full of bacteria, fungi, and protozoa, and that's called the rumen. This is where the food spends a lot of its time. Those bacteria are actually the ones eating the food, and then the byproducts of their metabolism give the goat her fatty acids for energy, and when the bacteria die, their little dead bodies cruise on down the intestine and give the goat her protein. So a very complex wee nutritional system with ruminants. It means that when we have stomach upsets, it can often be because the bacterial populations are out of whack, throwing off the pH, upsetting electrolyte balances, propping up fungal infections, hindering the availability of, of vitamins, to name a few, but it often comes back to the gut flora inside that rumen. So when we're talking about goat nutrition, often we're really talking about bacteria nutrition. Right, so let's jump into what makes goats unique and the key do's and don'ts of goat nutrition. Firstly, parasite burdens. Goats have not evolved to deal with gut worms because gut worm larvae live deep down in the bottom two to three centimeters of the grass and goats do not want to eat that low naturally. So keep the grass nice and long for these guys, do not ask them to graze down hard. Otherwise, they will pick up gut worms and they will not deal well with them. The worm burdens get out of control very quickly and the goats can keel over, often looking like a sudden death to the owners. Check out more about grazing your animals naturally with other species to keep parasite burdens low here. Goats need high fiber. Fiber is defined as non-digestible carbohydrates and this is non-digestible for mammals because we do not produce the enzyme to break down cellulose. But in these guys' case, they've found a way around it because their bacteria in the rumen will break down the fiber for them and they need high fiber for a few reasons. Firstly, their rumen munches through and empties the fiber faster than cattle and sheep, which means that while for sheep and cattle too much fiber can fill them up with bulk and slow down their growth, goats can thrive on a higher level. Goats can eat 6% of their body weight in dry matter versus just 4% for cattle, for example. You don't need to know those ins and outs of the jargon there, just appreciate the difference. Now, because it passes through them faster, it means that they'll glean less from each meal, but they can eat significantly more across the day, so they actually do very well on it. Secondly, long stem fibre, such as hay, scratches the walls of that room, and we say scratches, and it literally scratches and promotes strong contractions to push the food around, mix it up with all that bacteria and carry on with the job. This constant emptying of the rumen keeps the bacteria happy. When we don't have enough long stem fiber, 
the rooming can become atonic. A at atony means floppy and not contracting. It basically just goes floppy. When this happens, the bacterial population get thrown off, gas builds up, the animal bloats, and things do not look good for that wee goat. Now just note here that there are many different types of bloat, many different causes, so this needs to be diagnosed correctly. And thirdly, chewing fiber increases the amount of saliva produced. The amount of saliva produced by ruminants is directly related to how much phosphorus is excreted from the body. So when they're not chewing fiber and producing enough saliva, phosphorus builds up in the bloodstream, predisposing them to phosphatic calculi, which are crystals in the urine. These crystals in the urine can lodge in the penis on their way out, blocking the bladder and can kill a goat. Generally killing male goats, especially ones that have been castrated young. So keeping high levels of fiber is one of the key take home messages to reduce the risk of urinary crystals. To check out more about recognizing and preventing urinary crystals, check out one of the following episodes. Don't forget to subscribe to catch that one. Encourage browsing, but avoid toxic plants. I see many toxic plant cases every year in goats. Goats can actually neutralize tannins better than other grazers due to compounds in the saliva, and they have big salivary glands to be able to do so. Tannins are what's found in some plants. They taste really bitter, but goats don't care. They tend to be anti-nutritional and too much of them can make you unwell. But as I say, goats do really well at neutralizing these compared to other animals. So a lot of people will try and use them to tidy up weeds in the pasture, but just beware, rhododendron, oleander, lily of the valley, ragwort, just to name a few, these are some of the common ones I see. I will be doing an episode shortly on safe browse options for goats, so go ahead and subscribe to catch that, otherwise you can find lists online. And last but not least, please keep them away from junk. There is a disease called traumatic reticuloperitonitis, or the lay term is hardware disease. Now as the name suggests, it is when a ruminant eats junk and something pointy, usually a piece of wire, pokes through the front of that rumen and pierces the heart sac which lies just on the other side of the diaphragm. It's not uncommon and it's only a few inches away. You've got the rumen, diaphragm sits up hard against that, heart on the other side. It's not uncommon, I do see this disease plenty in cattle, sheep and goats. What I also see is simply obstructions from junk bunging up the gut. So chip packets, socks, clothing, just keep them away from it. They're not gonna do well with it in there. Nearly there, guys. Now, despite having the reputation of eating everything and anything, ironically, goats can actually be notoriously fussy. Cold water in winter, they don't want it. Warm water in summer, they'd prefer it cold and refreshing. Definitely make sure they have very clean water and that it's not ice cold. If it's soiled at all, they will refuse it and they will soil it themselves. They will play on the sides, jump into the trough, urinate directly in it, and then complain to you when it's not clean. So keep troughs clean, check them regularly, make sure there's enough for each goat to drink up, up to 15 litres a day in hot weather. And just beware of deep troughs over a goat kid's head. Goat kids have been known to play on the side and fallen and drowned. So if it's deep, just pop some big concrete blocks in there so they've got something to step up onto until you find them. And they will be fussy about hay as well. Again, if it's soiled at all, or moldy, they'll refuse it, which they should. They shouldn't be eating moldy food, so that's a good thing. But even sometimes just if it smells of other goats. So always replace the hay, don't just keep layering on top. So that's us for part one. Take home message, goats are not superheroes. Despite all the myths, they are not able to eat anything and everything. They are not sheep with horns and they need some management. And above all, watch out, those cheeky little monkeys will keep you on your toes. Okay guys, don't forget to subscribe catch the second part two, which is gonna delve into feeding more intensive life stages, your growing, your geriatrics, your does. And I will see you for the next one. Bye-bye.